Well, for more insight into what's going on at the Fukushima nuclear power plant, I'm now joined by Paul Gunter. He's there in Washington. He's a director of Reactor Oversight at Beyond Nuclear, a non-profit organization. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Mr. Gunter, for joining us live there in Washington. Well, earlier I spoke to a, an expert who likened the current crisis to Chernobyl. Would you agree with that assessment? Uh, well, right now, things, as things are playing out, it's certainly headed that way. Our concern is there's more radioactive materials there at the Fukushima site than were at Chernobyl. And what do you think is going on at the moment inside those reactors? Um, how stable do you think they are at the moment from what you can gather from the information you're receiving? Well, uh, the last update that we have is that uh, essentially uh, four, three units are, are in meltdown mode. Um, uh, clearly, uh, two of the containment systems are damaged. Uh, one may very well be, uh, unit three may very well be ruptured. Um, in addition to the three reactor accidents, uh, all six of these nuclear power plants have tremendous amounts of nuclear waste stored in pools on top of the roof outside of containment. And uh, clearly, unit number four, uh, the last report that we have, it has lost all water uh, cooling. Uh, the fuel is, uh, which in unit four, they had offloaded the fuel out of the reactor. So they put the entire reactor core into this rooftop pool. So it's out of containment. It's lost. It has no water. And clearly, we have a full core meltdown maybe on its way without any containment whatsoever. Uh, then there are the two other pools in five and six that have been heating up. And the concern is, is that if they do not restore power to that facility, uh, that all six reactors could become fully engaged and in a meltdown. What does a full core meltdown mean? What are the implications, not only to people there in the vicinity, but beyond? Well, the situation is, is that the, uh, when the reactors or the nuclear fuel uh, in these storage ponds uh, is uncovered from any kind of circulating water system, um, uh, the cladding, it's a zircaloy cladding, a zirconium cladding around the, the nuclear fuel um, pellets. And so as the pellets overheat and begin to melt, they can ignite this zirconium. Now, if you, if you powder zirconium, that's what you have in flash bulbs. Uh, zirconium is also used in high explosives. Uh, so, but it's also, if it's metal, in a metal form, it's a very strong and efficient transfer of heat through the, the tube wall. But when it ignites, it will burn like a flare. It will issue tremendous amounts of hydrogen gas and oxygen. And when you put water on it, it uh, makes a chemical reaction that separates out the hydrogen and the oxygen, but and it makes a very explosive environment. Explosive and this is what we have in combination though, with all this radioactivity. Sorry to ask you, um, interrupt there, but an explosive environment repeat? there, and also we're seeing radiation levels increasing beyond normal in Tokyo at the moment. But if that scenario did occur, what does that mean for the people in Tokyo, in Japan, and indeed in neighboring Russia? There, there are concerns there in Russia. Are they really valid concerns? The, uh, the consequences of uh, a, uh, a chain reaction, not only in the, the reactor fuel for any one reactor, but the, the next reactor and the next reactor and all six reactors becoming involved, uh, it really becomes then a matter of which way the wind blows and it will carry tremendous amounts of deadly radiation, sickening radiation, and uh, the, the, the consequences are really, um, I, I can't really comprehend what it could mean, not only in the immediate pathway, but in a, as the cloud begins to globally move. Well, what about those who are dealing with the situation? Something like 50 engineers remaining out of 90, well, 90 percent have uh, obviously evacuated uh, that uh, nuclear plant. Now, U.S. experts are claiming that people working at those reactors are now effectively taking their lives into their own hands. Are they really uh, perhaps on a suicide mission here, preparing to risk their lives at the moment? Certainly their lives are immediately at stake um, and uh, clearly they have sacrificed any kind of long life 
by being there. Uh, th this was uh, th this this is clearly an exposure that uh, jeopardizes uh, their immediate health, uh, and uh, actually there is concern. Uh, for people who come in contact with them after coming out of this uh, uh, catastrophe. Just, just very briefly and finally, what does this mean for the nuclear industry as a whole? Many critics will say this vindicates their argument. Just very briefly, what does this mean? What this means is that nuclear power represents more of a liability than it does an asset in a time of national crisis or natural disaster. It's proven to be a failure financially. It will uh, prove to be a, an increasing environmental threat unless we can move towards a 21st century energy policy with renewable energy and energy efficiency. Good to talk to you. Paul Gunter, Director of Reactor Oversight at Beyond Nuclear, joining us live there in Washington. We appreciate your analysis on the situation there in Japan. Thank you.